In the trailer for Stranger Things 2, the kids go to an arcade. They start playing this old game. And it's kind of strange because it's a literal cartoon. This is Dragon's Lair. If you know it, you remember how brutally hard it is. And depending on when you were born, you might not remember Dragon's Lair at all. But you'll recognize the art. Dragon's Lair was animated by Don Bluth. Bluth is a Disney veteran who founded his own company, Don Bluth Productions, in 1979. He did a lot of iconic films. Oh yeah, that's my childhood. Well, before he made us all cry with The Land Before Time, Bluth made Dragon's Lair. At a time when video games looked like this. How did we get this? Welcome to the early 80s. It began as the golden age of arcades, but within three years, the game industry almost disappeared completely. Unassuming as a modern-day David, his name is Rick Dyer, better known as the inventor of the laser video game Dragon's Lair. Rick Dyer was an inventor, game designer, and president of RDI Video Systems, and he was making games that ran on Laserdisc, DVD's forgotten cousin. He wanted his games to look special. People were sick of, of computer graphic games that didn't have appeal. They're tired of it. They wanted something a little more real. It's pretty amazing to see. So if your game, let's coin up. Dyer approached Don Bluth to work on a game. 13 animators sketched 50,000 drawings of the characters in action. 24 drawings for each second on screen. The project was completed on a minuscule budget of just $1 million. Legend has it that the studio couldn't afford models, so they used Playboy centerfolds as the basis for the damsel, Princess Daphne. And the gameplay was essentially all quick-time events. The player pressed a button or pushed the joystick in a certain direction to respond to a visual cue on screen. This was mind-blowing. It felt as though a barrier between films and games were being struck down. How far ahead of the video game industry Rick Dyer is can be seen in something that may end up in the Smithsonian Museum. It's the forerunner of Dragon's Lair. The prototype of Dragon's Lair was a game called Adventure. It would, it would roll the paper forward at a high speed and then stop, and you'd see a picture and some writing, and it would give you a list of choices. It used cash register paper, a good omen of things to come. Dragon's Lair came out in 1983. The familiar din of the video arcade is fading out. Business has dropped in half over the past year, and companies like Atari claim losses of more than $350 million. But there is something completely different that's invading the video emporium these days. Enter the world of the Dragon's Lair. People were lining up to play it at a time when arcades were not doing so hot. It was 1983's top arcade game, and it generated $48 million in revenue two quarters at a time. Dragon's Lair also launched Rick Dyer to fame. Network News has always struggled to cover video games, but it had a ball with Dragon's Lair. I think what blew everybody away was the fact that suddenly it was pictures, you know, and pictures uh, startled everyone, and so it was very successful for that reason. Watching the newsreels, you get the feeling that the media really wanted it to be big because it was something that finally made sense to people who didn't play video games. After a year, fans were starting to realize that Dragon's Lair wasn't exactly fun. And arcades were sick of fragile Laserdisc machines and expensive games that players wouldn't return to once they had memorized all the moves. But never mind that. Cable News genuinely thought that Rick Dyer was going to save video games. A man whose mind is light years in the future. Elevator music. <laughs> Louder. By the mid-80s, RDI Video Systems was bankrupt. But Dragon's Lair still hasn't gone away. It's been re-released over and over again, most recently on Steam. It's barely interactive. It's awkward to play. But it survived. And now the ultimate cult video game is going to be in Stranger Things, a TV show that is an homage to cult classics and is paradoxically one of the most popular shows that Netflix has ever distributed. It's not the 80s anymore. In 2017, geek culture and video games are the mainstream. Video games did become more cinematic. Some video games do look like cartoons. So Dragon's Lair itself wasn't the future of video games. But maybe, in the Upside Down, 
It is. Thank you so much for watching this video. I had a great time making it, and I hope you had a good time watching it. And if you want to see more of those ridiculous 80s news clips and all of their glory, they are linked in the description below. Thanks so much. Have a great day.